This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. As you all know, our guy Ed Fang is a guy of many talents, and we're going to utilize those talents not just today, but for the coming weeks, because Ed has World Cup numbers. We'll talk about those for today, break down what goes into that, what they're saying right now, but also, of course, to our usual preview of this week's college football games. Week number 11 coming up, we'll break down those big games with Ed and get his read on the World Cup numbers as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sutton. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find him on Twitter at the Power Rank and check out his work at thepowerrank.com. And Ed, it is a big time of year for you. We got college football, we got World Cup, we got college basketball all going on, along with a thing called the NFL. So yeah. busy times, I assume. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, it's uh always a little bit of catch up. Uh, getting some college basketball code going, but it is going, so that's nice. And, and members of the site do have <clears throat> predictions to spreads, and this is a good time of year to, to bet college basketball. And uh, World Cup is coming up and kind of haven't touched it yet, but I still have 10 days, 11 days. Yeah. So, um, but we'll talk about some of the some of the more general stuff um, since it, it's a nice thing that uh, country performance tends to persist over time. So we'll, we'll use that a lot for this World Cup. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk about what your numbers are saying. Just kind of get an initial read on that. And we'll be talking more about World Cup as the year goes along, too. Dude. It's just because if we've got Ed, we might as well use the full extent of his powers. So we'll be doing that on the show throughout this fall. So we'll talk about Week 11 first in college football. Then we'll go through some World Cup numbers after that. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Gave my first look at NFL Week Number 10. Based on what my numbers are saying yesterday here on the show, we'll do a full breakdown tomorrow with a player prop preview on Friday as well. Get all those podcasts by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And also you can get these podcasts over on the FanDuel YouTube page. So if you want a video version, check us out over there. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Try out features like same game parlays, play your way, and bet on more than just the final score wager on everything from touchdowns to total yards to catches, all in an app that's safe and secure and super easy to use. So sign up today for your no sweat first bet. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. Or in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. So let's jump right in to the college football games here for week number 11, because we're going to talk some World Cup later on. We'll start things off with LSU at Arkansas. Right now, LSU, a three-point favorite. Total is 63.5, and and LSU, Ed, obviously got that huge win over Alabama. Big win there, but they come back from that with a decently tough test here, facing off with Arkansas as well. So can LSU keep this run going and win again in a tough road spot? I certainly think so. I think LSU has kind of been underrated in some sense all year we didn't really know what we were going to get with brian kelly coming in and taking over this team and then they lose that opener to florida state if you remember uh they got uh they had an extra point to tie the game at the very end and they they got it blocked and and lost in pretty dramatic fashion and honestly right now their only other losses to tennessee uh which the score was pretty lopsided, but it was really a game where LSU kind of killed themselves in the first half. Uh, they fumbled a kickoff deep in their own territory, gave up a 50 yard, uh, 58 yard punt return, and then failed to convert four fourth down, sorry, three fourth downs in the first half. So the game just got out of control. 
Um, the underlying metrics didn't suggest that LSU was a better team, but it did suggest that it was better than the, I believe, the 40 to 13 score. And, you know, it did take like a late touchdown, late two point conversion for them to beat Alabama in pretty dramatic fashion. They did have a better success rate in that game overall. So my numbers actually see a really good team. Um, I believe they are 10th in success rate adjusted for opponent on offense, 14th on defense, very strong team on both sides of the ball. And, you know, Arkansas is a team that kind of struggled. I mean, I don't know what else you can say when you lose as a 14 and a half point favorite to Liberty at home. Uh, if you weren't going to reach seven and a half wins because of how tough the SEC West is. Yeah. That, you know, that's certainly one thing, but to, to not be able to be yeah. Liberty at home is, is not a good thing there. They had a lot of questions on defense coming into the year. Uh, they brought in a lot of transfers to kind of fill in some gaps for a defense that was pretty good last year. They're 103rd when I look at adjusted success rate. You know, my model tends to be aggressive. I think it's kind of capturing what we're seeing with LSU. And uh, I have them by five and a half. I, I like LSU minus three here. I think they win this game. There's so much motivation here. They they just – there's really not going to be a letdown, I don't think, because – yeah they have to win here and they beat Texas A&M and their SEC West champs, which is, which would be a huge, huge accomplishment first year for Brian Kelly. So um, I think they win. I don't see why they can't cover three and uh, maybe, maybe it even gets away. Maybe it even gets away from Arkansas at home. Do you feel like the threat of a letdown is what's keeping the market kind of tepid here? Uh, it's minus minus one fourteen and minus three. So it's not like a full minus three there, but like, it does seem like it's a little bit, they're hesitant to fully buy in. Do you think the letdown argument is what's doing that? I don't know. I personally think it's kind of dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Given all that they have to play for. I mean, they're what seventh in the college football playoff. Yeah. So they're probably not making it with two losses, but, and, and there's, you know, a preponderance of undefeated teams now. Right. So it's, so it's unlikely, although one of them probably most likely is not going to be undefeated and we'll get to that in a sec, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I I don't I don't see a letdown, but maybe. Yeah, we'll see how that one goes down. But Ed does like LSU minus three on the road against Arkansas. Let's go out to the Pac-12 now and talk about Washington at Oregon. Oregon is a 13 and a half point favorite, total of 72 and a half. Massive, massive total here. Uh, and Oregon has been playing really good football. Really no stumbles even since that Georgia game. It's a big number, though. Washington's not a bad team, so are your numbers saying Oregon is good enough to cover a B a big number given what they've done since that Georgia game? Uh, no, I, I cannot get to 13 and a half <laughs> in this game. Oregon's been good. It's still, I'm still kind of wrap, wrapping my head around the reality that Bo Nix is a competent quarterback Something and, and never... receiver. Let's not forget pass catcher <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, he's been great. He's on, you know, he's, he's up on these Heisman. He's up on these Heisman odds pretty high. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it was interesting. It was kind of interesting to go back to the UCLA game where Oregon won, did not have a better success rate than UCLA. But one thing that ended up really changing that game was a surprise onside kick. So they were able to recover one in the middle of the game. They go up two touchdowns and it was, it was kind of over from there. So I think that's pretty interesting from a strategic point of view, what the new coach Dan Lanning is doing up there. Um, on the other side of the ball, like Washington, I mean, I mean this, my numbers still really like what they're doing in pass offense. I've talked about Michael Penix, how I've always really liked him as a quarterback. They're very high when I look at passing success rate. I think both these teams are top five. Um, and, you know, both of these teams are not as good on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, at some point this season, I had a bet on Washington. Part of the reason, I think we were talking about Washington UCLA. And, and at that point, their defensive numbers looked really good. Yeah. And uh, they've kind of fallen off a cliff since then. You know, we expected Washington's defense to be good. It was it was a unit that was pretty good last year. They've, they've fallen off a cliff. They're 64th when I look at adjusted success rate that's not good but but Oregon's worse so they're they're 66th um so uh yeah I would I would not bet the under in this game it seems like they're gonna go up and down the field uh, a couple mistakes can uh kind of tip it one way or the other I mean I think Washington I would definitely lean towards Washington here I mean I think you know almost two touchdowns is a lot to cover and uh yeah it should be a good fun game
Do you feel strong enough in the 13 and a half to actually bet that? Or is it more so a lean for you given you're not getting the 14 there? Yeah, I haven't bet it yet. Yeah. If it went to 14, I think it'd be a no brainer. Yeah. Um, but, but I haven't bet it yet. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in the lean category for now. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that one. It is 13 and a half right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, so keep tabs on that one. Uh, the It is minus 112 on the 13 and a half. So as of right now, I'm guessing it's probably not going to get to 14. But if it were to get to 14, you know, Saturday morning, we see a lot of movement there. Maybe that's spot to buy in. But for right now, uh, just a lean on Washington plus 13 and a half. Let's go now to that game you alluded to before. We got TCU bringing their undefeated record on the road to Texas. Seven and a half point friend, uh, spread in Texas's favor here. Total is 64 and a half. And it seems like this is a spot where unsurprisingly there's deviation between the college football playoff committee and the betting markets where the college football playoff committee begrudgingly, I think uh, buying into TCU, putting them inside the top four this week, betting markets, obviously not doing that yet relative to a very good Texas team. So can TCU overcome the market's expectations and cover against Texas, or is a spot where the market has this thing, this thing clearly pegged? Yeah. I mean, I have this at 7.8 points, so I'm pretty much right on where the market, uh, lies i i don't i i do think texas wins this game and you know it's, it's it was interesting to kind of catch up on them they've lost three games but they've all been within one score i mean everyone remembers the single point i believe it was a point that they, they lost to alabama at home you know this is a good team that is eighth when i look at adjusted success rate on offense 17th on on defense Quinn Ewers has back, been back for four games, really struggled against Oklahoma State, but otherwise has been uh, pretty good. B. John Robinson, the, the running back, getting almost six yards of carry. Um, you know, seems like Sark's got a pretty good football team going on. Um, you know, nothing against TCU, but, you know, they're, they're just not uh, quite in the, the same ballpark. And, yeah, you know, I mean, they've been kind of relying on explosive plays, uh, especially against West Virginia in a game which they had worse success rate than their opponent, even though they won. Um, you know, it 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 wasn't a close game, except it, it wasn't a close game by the final score because they won by 10, but it was within three for, for much of the fourth quarter. So a uh, competitive contest. And, and you're going to get those on the road in conference. But the numbers have a lot more respect for Texas. I think the market's right on the ball on this. I think we'll see TCU go down for the first time and, and fall on those college football playoff rankings. I do find it very interesting that that FanDuel is the only book I see right now at seven and a half. Uh, most are at seven still. Like um, you can find uh, TCU plus seven at minus one oh five. Um, so like you could buy that potentially and like, but FanDuel has seven and a half. It seems like they're trying to get action on TCU based on that. And I find that very interesting that the, the that we're seeing yeah. this this uh kind of reaction and we're seeing it, it, i would assume based on that a lack of a reaction from the betting public to what the the committee said which is appropriate i'm just kind of surprised it's been the case yeah it is interesting you're not getting any tcu plus seven and a half for me um so <laughs> but hey you know you want to stick your neck out there yeah um honestly another game that they're sticking their neck out there is uh pit they have pit at a, as a three and a half point favorite the mm -hmm. rest of the market's at four and a half my number is at seven plus. They're playing. They're at uh, Virginia, and Virginia is a really interesting team because they were this massive over team with with uh, Brendan Armstrong, uh, uh, the quarterback last year. I hope I'm not butchering. I think I might have gotten his name wrong. Anyways, the quarterback, and and they, they've been they've been very different this year. Just just not the same team with with new coach uh, Tony Elliott and. and um, yeah, I mean, my number's really like Pitt, minus three and a half there on the road. Uh, I've talked about not being a really big fan of Pitt, and I'm not. It's just yeah. the opponent this week. Um, so that's another That's another one where FanDuel's off. Maybe they want the action, Pitt, yeah. minus three and a half. I, I really don't know. Uh, obviously, not a key number there between three and a half right. and four and a half. But another interesting game where, where FanDuel's off, off market. Yeah. In a very liquid market, a point is still a lot, even if it's not a key number. Uh, and it is, it was Armstrong both last year and this year. So, uh, Brennan, uh, so I think, yeah, oh, sweet. I got that right. Yeah. Nice. No, you got it. You're good. Um, but yeah, I think that that one is also pretty interesting. Again, in a market like this, being a point off, regardless of the key number, is interesting. And uh, the point, the half point here, given seven, is a key number for TCU Texas, also very interesting as well. Okay. Where else is he in value for week number 11 right now, Ed? 
Yeah, this was definitely where I was going to talk about that Pitt Virginia game. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> jumped the gun a little bit there. Um, I also did note, uh, like my numbers do like the over in the the Texas T- TCU game. I think the market's at sixty four and a half right now. Uh, my number is almost at sixty eight. Um, you know, TCU's defense is probably is good, but probably the worst unit on the field. And uh, there, there should be a lot of points in, in this one. So um, that's th- definitely another place that I potentially see, I see value. Yeah, the pit one is a three and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. As you mentioned, it is four and a half. Uh, a lot of other places. Let me check to see uh, where else you can get that. Um, yeah, it's it's three and a half at FanDuel. There is a there are some fours out there. So there's been some movement onto a four, but uh, that's the lone three and a half I see. So if you want to bet Pitt, uh, FanDuel is the place to do so. Uh, that is minus 110 right now on the three and a half. And as you mentioned, the total for the TCU Texas game, 64 and a half. Your numbers have that one up at 68. Okay, let's shift now and talk about the World Cup because it is 10, 11 days away from the first game here. And we yep. talked about your, your world soccer numbers on the show before, but that was... A long time ago. Um, and it, we've had, you know, it's a football season, so different different listenership right now. So I want to go through kind of the process you go through in setting things up for this, uh, for a World Cup. Where are you at in that process to get things ready for when the actual games kick off in 10 or 11 days? My world soccer rankings are, are actually the most visited page on my site, which really? I still kind of find weird. Uh, yeah. It picked up some good search engine juice and and yeah. But uh, I mean, I mean, the numbers are good. I think they're accurate. So what I found in world soccer is that you look at a pretty large window of games. Uh, I take about a five-year window of games. And a lot of the research shows that play over, for the national team tends to be pretty stationary over time. Um, sometimes you get uh, variations. So if, you, if I actually do run some numbers that look at, you know, over a decade worth of games and results and brazil's at the top no matter how you do it and they should be the favorite and they are the betting favorite and i think you'd find it hard to find someone that would disagree with that but uh you know more recently like this belgian team is second in my world rankings and this is the golden generation for belgium uh players like kevin de bruyne is is quite simply the best playmaking uh player in the world right now uh plays for man city um has been really good uh they're second you know they're not second when you look at the betting markets i think partially is because they have a pretty old back line uh also uh lukaku their their striker has not been playing for inter he hasn't been playing for his club i mean this is a guy that was absolutely brilliant last summer uh when they played in euros so uh, it's a team that does have a lot of talent there. They, they have performed. They might not be quite up to that standard given some of the, the player changes. And, um, so yeah, so I just look at game results. I just for strength of schedule, which is hugely important in, uh, world soccer, even in Europe where, you know, you can get a qualifying game against San Marino, who is quite simply terrible. Uh, there's, there's a, there's a huge range of outcomes. This is not the NFL. You really do have to adjust for schedule. And I just restrained the schedule. Uh, I get the rankings on the site. At some point, I will have uh, uh, win probabilities as well for the World Cup. Brazil will be at the top. And uh, it will it will go on down from there. You know, it's interesting. I mean, France is third. Can't, agree, can't disagree with that. They are always uber talented. Are they going to show up like they did in 2018 and win it all? Right. Uh, are they going to bow out in the group stage like they have? <laughs> sometimes or actually like they did the last time they won the world cup and then went to the world cup yeah that might happen too (laughs) um the netherlands is fourth i think that's a little bit high for this team uh the dutch are always uh a nation that plays the game the way it should be played but just don't really see the offensive attacking talent on that team to kind of justify that or to be the fourth and and the buddy betting markets are would agree with that as well uh spain is fifth super talented team i actually think this team is very underrated um kind of in the general public and uh the betting markets do like them um six is italy they didn't make it uh portugal seventh probably a little overrated uh still a a very good soccer playing nation but ronaldo's old uh but they do they do have some significant young players so anyways uh 
I could continue to go on, but it, it's kind of a start to the resources, um, you know, using analytics to, to kind of have one different way of looking at these teams in the World Cup. I also think that there's going to be a ton of other ways. Obviously, the betting markets are one. Yeah. Um, there's another way in which you can look at salaries of the players on the teams, huh. um, which gives you, you know, it's in soccer, like salaries and performance are very tightly correlated. Yeah. And I would actually really love to see the plot of soccer, like win winning percentage versus salary in soccer versus baseball, because baseball, it's all over the place. Right. And I don't really know what that means, but, um, but yeah, anyways, the, a different way of looking at these clubs is, you know, how much they get paid on their clubs. And, um, oh yeah, we should talk about the U.S., right? Sure, let's do it. 120 to 1, are you biting it? <laughs> oh, heck no. <laughs> so, when you're a soccer snob like myself, like, you you believe that, you know, there's a right way to play, which mm-hmm. is the, played by Western European nations in Brazil, and to a lesser extent, Argentina. I don't think Argentina is particularly good. Oh, Argentina's we should talk about a team that I think the markets have wrong. Yeah. Argentina is the second favorite to win this world cup. I think that's absolutely wrong. I think they're complete. I think they're overrated because they beat Brazil in the Copa America final last summer, which was a complete fluke in which to do Brazil completely dominated the game and, and managed to lose one, nothing. All the headlines were that Messi finally wins a trophy. And that's great. I'm, I'm really, it's great that Messi won a trophy, you know, best player of his generation. I, I mean, I guess there's arguments about that, but um, but this Argentina team is not should not have the second highest odds to to win the World Cup. Yeah, they're they plus five fifty right now. Uh, that is second behind just Brazil, plus five fifty for Argentina. So we're not we're not buying that. It sounds like you're saying. I personally am not buying it. Okay. My numbers would not buy it as well. Um, and you know, and Messi's not really near his prime by any stretch. I mean, he's not like he he did not carry Argentina to that win. I actually thought like he wasn't particularly good in that game. Um, he got all the accolades and right, rightfully so as a lifetime achievement award, but he wasn't good in that game. Yeah. So I, I would strongly disagree with Argentina as the second, second favorite right now. So we can't bet the U S at 120 to one to win. They're plus 550 to get out of their group. Obviously I'm guessing you have not run group numbers yet because that's further down not. the line. Um, we got what England. Price? What's that? Plus 550 uh, against England is minus 250. Wales plus 550. Iran is 19 to 1. 550? Yeah. That seems... To, to win the group. Sorry, to win the group. Oh, to win the group. Sorry, okay. I miss, yeah, yeah, I miss said that. To win yeah. the group, uh, plus 550. Right. So the United States should be better than Wales. The numbers say they are. I think talent-wise, they are. There's always the wild card um, of Gareth Bale. The, the player for Wales, who's been one of the, you know, one of the preeminent players in the world over the past decade, except he's old. And, you know, he's like a player that really relied on his athleticism. So, I mean, they should, I mean, honestly, if they, if they beat Wales in that opening game, they're, they're probably through. Yeah. Um, they should beat Iran. And then whatever happens against England happens against England who we're not, we're not as good as England as much as it pains me to say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, I mean, a lot of that relies on that first game against Wales. I think we probably do get out of this group. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think this is a talented team, but I do have my doubts whether they can put it together. I think partially part of that is because they just played so terribly in the the last two friendlies about a month ago before the World Cup. But it was an awkward situation in which they decided to play these friendlies in Europe. So they didn't have to fly all their players back home to the United States. And so you had these like really uninteresting games where there was no one in, it was like a COVID situation, right? There was no fans in the stadium and yeah, they look terrible. Yeah. They're, they're not terrible. Yeah. They, they actually have a lot of really good players. Um, but, but yeah, dude, I mean, don't, don't bet them plus 120 to win the world cup. They're not going to win the world cup. I wasn't just, planning on it. I mean, but, if, they, uh, if, they get, if they get to the, if they get to the quarterfinals, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so they're minus 105 to get out of group B. 
Yeah, there in, you go. That's about right. That seems about right. Yeah, Wales is plus 105. So it almost exactly mirrors what you said, where it's kind of just those two fighting for that second slot. And they're pretty evenly matched with the USA being a bit better and coming out of that, uh, that initial match. Uh, so USA minus 105 to get out of that group at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. I wanted to circle back before we wrap up to Belgium, because you mentioned that your numbers like them, concerned about Lukaku not playing. 23 to 1, though, seems somewhat forgiving for a team that has some concerns, but does grade out really well based on your numbers. So is that long enough where, uh, again, this is not based on your numbers because you've not run them yet, but would you consider biting on Belgium at 23 to one, given that may be a lot of flexibility to count for the negatives you discussed? That's a great question. I, I would, I would need to dig a little bit more into the roster. My numbers yeah. are certainly going to say there's like massive, massive value yeah. on Belgium at that price. But, you know, uh, I think there's reasons th to think that the, yeah, that, that they're, they're not going to do as well. Um, so I'm going to take a rain check on that question. I'll get back okay. to you on that next week. Well, but, there's more time to talk this. So we're all good. Yeah. Um, but, but I do want to mention a, a dark horse. So I had Ryan yeah. O'Hanlon of ESPN on my podcast this week. He's a yeah. soccer writer. He just wrote a book called net gains, which is, fantastic it's about soccer it's about analytics if you like either of those i think you will really enjoy the book but he gave me a dark dark horse in, in denmark uh a very talented team uh one that's completely flying under the radar in terms of the public at least their 10th when i look at my numbers this is a team that got i think all the way to the semifinals of euro last year um yeah just the team that is is really good could sneak up on people and um yeah that that's a team that i i i would i like them a little bit more than than saying belgium is going to be a favorite just given the personnel situation with this belgium team yeah uh denmark right now at fanduel is 24 to 1 to win it all so uh the dark horse there could be kind of intriguing right in the belgium zone so uh we'll have to check back in next week to see what your preference is there but as i said more world cup discussion coming up here on the show because if we've got ed we got to take advantage of all of his knowledge. Uh, once again, uh, that is all that we have here for today. But fun to, to start talking about the World Cup with you, Ed. I think that this is going to be a, a good little journey. Maybe I'll get some uh, some soccer bets down for the first time in my life, um, I believe. I don't think I've ever actually bet it. So yeah. maybe you can talk me into it. Maybe we'll have some fun with that. Yeah, that sounds really good. I'm, I'm not sure I've made a soccer bet since the last World Cup. So yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, with these games, with the win-loss tie probabilities yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. for the games it is uh you know those markets are going to be pretty sharp yeah i think it's going to be important to kind of i mean certainly over the next 11 days i'm going to be looking elsewhere to find value um so but it's also yeah, important I mean, with those markets that you're keeping you are like self-calculating hold because it's a lot easier to hide the hold in a market where there are three offerings available, three outcomes available than it is with a minus one ten each side for, you know, winner or loser in an NFL market. Right. Um, so I think that's the other thing to like flag here is with those, um, with the draw being in there, make sure you are being extra vigilant about the hold you're paying because you can get, it can get bad real fast if you're not paying attention to those markets in that way. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, yeah, and definitely like calculate your hold, right? Yeah, always. So. Oh, you should always. You should always do that for sure. But I think especially here when it's a market, maybe not all of us are betting into always. Just kind of keep sure yeah. you're make sure you're being vigilant on that because it can be it can get real nasty real fast if you're not paying attention. Well, that is Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work over the PowerRank.com. You alluded to those uh, those World Soccer ranks. You can find those at the PowerRank.com. You can find his college basketball stuff he mentioned, college football, NFL, everything all in the same place at the PowerRank.com. Ed, you mentioned your podcast. Where can people find that? Um, and anything else you want to plug for this week? Yeah, the the podcast is the Football Analytics Show. Uh, we still stuck with football, although not the, the usual American football this week. Football. Uh, Football analytics uh, show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I talked with Ryan O'Hanlon, who who was fantastic. Uh, he's a great writer. The book is really awesome. Talk to him about the book. Talk to him about the World Cup. And uh, it will be up on Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be up by the time exactly this podcast is dropped. But uh, yeah, check that out. And then, yeah, we, we'll be doing a lot of football 
both American and world uh, over the next couple of weeks at my email newsletter. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. All righty. Don't forget to follow Ed on Twitter as well at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We are back once again tomorrow breaking down NFL week number 10 with Ryan Williams. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 